custom function menu on the RFS 2.2 allows you to configure the trigger in a number of ways. But first you need to learn how to get into the custom function menu. To do that, you simply hold the test button on the top while simultaneously sliding the on switch on the right. Now when you look in the back of the menu, you'll see that we are already in the custom function section. So there's a couple different things we can do here. The first is going to be our transceiver setting, so we can hit set and that's going to allow us to either scroll from using this trigger as a receiver or as strictly a transmitter. A transceiver means we have the option of using it as both. So after I hit set, we're good to go. The next function is going to be the PC sync input. So over here on the left hand side is a micro USB for firmware updates as well as a PC sync port. So open that up and show you that right there. And how you control that is right here from the custom function menu. So by hitting set, we can either use that as an input or as an output. So this is going to allow us to control uh, non-HS flashes or to trigger other flashes or radio systems while using a non-HS trigger. The next option we have here, scrolling up, is the top hot shoe settings. So if we hit set, you'll notice that right now it's set to single which just uses the middle pin, which is great for allowing a signal to transfer through to other transmitters if you're using different wireless triggers. Or if we want to go ahead and change this top hot shoe to multiple, that's going to set it up and allow you to put a small flash or a speed light on here, and it'll use multiple points of contact to allow that to operate correctly. Next is your LCD brightness. And finally, over here, we have the firmware, so you can set, and this is where you're going to access that to go ahead and update the firmware sections. So when you're all set, if you want to reset the unit to its factory defaults, what you're going to do is turn off the unit, and then on, and then test, hold that button down for four seconds, and it's going to go ahead and give you a factory reset to the default settings.